Good morning, everyone. You know, just the afternoon before a Christmas program was due to take place, a mother called the rectory and said that her son, who was supposed to play Joseph that evening, was sick. He was unable to do it. Well, the pastor of the parish said, well, certainly we'll pray for him, but at this point it's a little too late to get a replacement. So they decided to simply write Joseph out of the Christmas pageant. So that evening the Christmas pageant took place and everyone had their lines and everyone did everything they were supposed to do except there was no Joseph. Guess what? No one noticed. Poor Saint Joseph. This time of the year, our, fo our focus, of course, is on the Christ child, as it should be, and we see Mary. But for some reason, Joseph just seems to get lost in the background. Poor Joseph. Yet today's gospel, today's gospel is sometimes called the Annunciation to Joseph, because in this gospel, Joseph takes center stage. This is when the angel comes to Joseph in a dream to tell him to take Mary, his wife, into his home. And to take the responsibility of being the earthly father of this newborn child in naming him Jesus. I think Joseph, for us today, can teach us three very important lessons about the Christian life. Lessons that we need to hear throughout the whole year, but especially in these days leading up to Christmas. The first lesson is that God's plan will be accomplished. Nothing will thwart God's will. The second is that God will use us to accomplish his plan. And finally, the message to Joseph from the angel is a message to us. Do not be afraid. The first lesson, of course, is that God's plan will be accomplished. It's not going to be thwarted. Even though sometimes it looks as though God's plan seems a bit confusing to us, it doesn't seem to be accomplished very well, it will happen. Look at what we heard in our first reading from the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is speaking and writing in the 8th century BC, a time when Israel is in grave trouble because of the sin and selfishness of their king Ahaz. God then comes to the king and says to him, just ask for a sign. Meaning, ask of me for a particular event to happen that will show you and the people of Israel that I will definitely intervene into your history. Just ask. And what does Ahaz do? He says, no. I will not ask for that sign. He does not believe that God will intervene, that God's will will be accomplished. Nonetheless, as we heard in the prophet Isaiah, God does give a sign. And that sign we find in our gospel is ultimately fulfilled in Jesus. In Isaiah it says that a virgin will conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The angel says to Joseph that that sign is actually now coming to be completed fully in the arrival of this child. This child that has come of the Holy Spirit, that is within the womb, Joseph, of your betrothed, Mary. You see, my brothers and sisters, even when things look darkest in our life, when the will of God seems most confusing, God will accomplish it. He will save. He will bring us hope. He will arrive with love and mercy in our life. And even though it may not happen in our time, in the way that we want, it will be accomplished according to his plan. 
Do not worry. God will answer. But then the second, the second lesson I think that Joseph teaches us is that God is not going to just do things without us. As a matter of fact, he wants to use us and do things with us in order to accomplish his divine providential plan. Could you imagine being Joseph? I mean, seriously. Coming down to your morning coffee and sitting at the breakfast table with the Immaculate Virgin Mary and the Son of God. And don't you think that'd be a bit intimidating? If anything went wrong in the household of Nazareth, whose fault was it? I mean, seriously, right? So Joseph must have been a little bit intimidating, thinking, wait a minute, this is a bit much for me. And how is it that God could involve me in this? That's the reason why many of the fathers of the church, and even Pope John Paul II, believe that when Joseph says that he's going to betroth Mary, he's going, he's going to divorce his betrothed quietly, he's actually doing so because he realizes that this is God's incredible plan and that he can't possibly have a role in it. He has to kind of step back and let God do what he wants to do. Joseph was betrothed to Mary, meaning that he was legally already married to her. The angel says, you know, don't be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. But he, he realizes that something is happening in Mary of the Holy Spirit. That possibly even this great promise of the Messiah is taking place. And Joseph wants to just step back. How could I be involved with this? Who am I to be part of this incredible plan of God? Yet the angel in today's gospel announces that not only is Joseph to be involved... But he has a central role to play in the coming of the Messiah. He is to name the child. And for Jews, that's an extremely important role to play. It means that Joseph is accepting the responsibility of caring for that child as his earthly father. And he is incorporating Jesus into the whole history of the people of Israel through the house of David, which is Joseph's house. He's connecting the child to the people of Israel. He has a critical and central role in accomplishing God's plan. So do you and I. Each one of us has got a special place in God's plan. A niche, if you will, in salvation history. Our faithfulness to our vocation, to holiness and our particular vocation, interconnects us with so many people. And what we do and say as Christians affects the world and brings forth goodness if we're willing to be good. You see, we are not forgotten by God. We are not just a, a, a minor little cog in a great big machine. No, we all have a special place in God's plan. One in which no one can replace. We have a role and a vocation to fulfill just like Joseph. Not only will God accomplish his plan, but he wants you and me to be a part of that plan. St. Augustine once wrote that God created us without us, but he did not will to save us without us. That is so true. Finally, finally Joseph teaches us another lesson that's important for our daily lives as Christians. When the angel appears to Zechariah, to Mary, and to Joseph, that angel says one thing similar. He tells each of them this phrase, Do not be afraid. That phrase is not just meant for them. It's meant for you and me. Not to be afraid to be a believing Christian and a Catholic who loves God, 
who loves our neighbor, who loves our church, and is full and committed to our Catholic faith. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid is a phrase that echoes down through the ages. Those words of hope and peace for all men and women of all vocations and walks of life and ages. It's as though the Lord is saying to you and me today, don't be afraid to remain faithful to your spouse, to your vocation as a priest or religious. Don't be afraid to defend and promote the dignity of marriage and of unborn human life. Don't be afraid, Christian, to protect and support those who are on the periphery of society, as Pope Francis says, the poor, the uneducated, the prisoner, the addict. Don't be afraid to engage others in conversations about your faith and share that faith with others. Don't be afraid in the next few days to invite someone to Christmas Mass, especially that person in our life that we know seems to be drifting from Christ and his church. Don't be afraid to face, with divine grace, a bad habit and sin and vice or addiction that is weighing you down and that causes your conscience to be darkened. Bring that to the healing wounds of Christ in confession. Don't be afraid of our Savior. Don't be afraid because the Christ to be born is Emmanuel, meaning God with us. As we approach Christmas Day, don't forget poor Joseph, who gets lost in the background. He is a wonderful man. He is a man who can teach us so much these days especially. May we all learn from this carpenter from Nazareth. Learn from him that God will accomplish his loving plan in your life and in mine. Learn from him that he wants us to cooperate and be a part of that plan and learn from him that ever important lesson, do not be afraid.